Welcome to No Apologies on Beck, where we are unafraid to speak the truth. I am your host, Rick Becker. We have our co-host, Lori Hintz. Hi there. Thanks and a great for show for you tonight. I, I just want to say thank you, everybody who watched the show last night, and thanks for all the kind comments on social media. It was really, really heartening, so thanks. Yeah, very nice. Tonight's very interesting. We've got a couple of topics, one about Trump's legal battles, mm -hmm. which is a cornucopia of confusion. <laughs> that is a great word. Cornucopia is exactly yeah. right. It is, it's all encompassing. It is uh, multifaceted and it's ongoing at the same time in multiple states. So it is a, it's a huge deal too. And it's uh, to set up, there are five states in particular where things are going on and each one is different. And the bottom line all told is that the American people are entitled to an honest and a transparent election. We are entitled to know that this is going to be a fair election, mm -hmm. and the president is entitled to let things play out as they will, too. So that is, um, as we go in, allowing the recounts and the lawsuits to run their course will also give the American people some confidence in future elections. You've got to think about the long-term implications of half of the electorate being completely dissatisfied with how safe and fair things were and how fraudulent things were and it would have profound effects on future yeah i i agree with you on on essentially everything you said mm -hmm. we we more important even than who's president is that we can trust the elect election process exactly. and that the the voice of the people is heard right my my concern though is that when we when we talk about the transparency, let the process play out, mm -hmm. and and allowing the people to believe in that process, it would be I think better if we knew what the concern was. For instance, with the uh, was it two thousand with Gore Bush, right? We we knew what the process the concern was, right? Um, and let's figure it out. Let's do the recounts. Look at the chads. Look at the hanging. This yeah. is different, no question, because there are so many different problems and so many different facets to this that there's no one hanging chad. Right, right. Well, I, I mean, yeah, I know that. See, I just get frustrated because I would love more than anything for Trump to get back in. Mm -hmm. I want that to happen. Right. I'm concerned about the shotgun approach. Now, after the election, you and I talked, and I, I was a big believer that if anyone uh, has something ready to go, prepared, was prepared ahead of time, mm -hmm. and was going to, you know, <laughs> release the Kraken. Right, right. <laughs> it, it was going to be Trump. Right. Um, but, I mean. You haven't seen that? I, th several weeks have passed. Well, I'm just here to tell you there are things going on in the background that nobody knows about, and there's a reason for that. I believe there's a reason for that. It's the art of war, in my mind. You can't completely tip your hand, otherwise they're going to have a chance to be able to hide all of the evidence. So I think there is a very big balance going on right now, particularly with the Sidney Powells and the Lynn Woods, and then, of course, the Rudy Giuliani's and the Jenna Ellis's. And so they're all working in concert, but they're also trying to um, keep things close to the vest for a reason, and that's my opinion. But they've got 10 days. I know. 10 days, it's time to get it off your vest. I know. Put it out in the court, put it out for the public, put it. <laughs> uh, as of last week, there were a combined 545 sworn declarations in five states, and that is Pennsylvania, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, and Wisconsin. So you've mm -hmm. got five states where you've got battles going. And of course, now this is what I'm just going to tell you. There is still a clear path to the win for Trump through those states. There is. If you have a couple of different, you, you look really skeptical when I said I, that. You have no idea the depth of my skepticism. I'm an internal optimist. And you've got to understand, look at the last four years of this president. Look at what he's done and how many things he's skated past that everyone said, Russia, 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 Russia. And then, then the Durham report. And then, uh, I mean, all of the, well, and all of the ridiculous accusations. If there is anybody who's going to pull this out, it's going to be Donald J. Trump, I guarantee. Well, I, yes. But I, I, he, essentially, he is going to be dealt five cards, plain poker, just flat five cards. The only way he can win is if he gets a royal, royal flush. flush. The I, odds I, of I that, that are... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. I, I want, I want to be with you, Lori. I know you do, and and there's a lot of other people too who are skeptical, and they're they're just thinking, you know, like the fat lady has not sung yet. Here, here's another thing that I don't know if I'm getting you off topic. But, no, no, you're but fine. My concern is Sidney Powell and Lynn Wood. Right. Okay. What are they doing, telling the voters of Georgia to not vote 
in the runoff or in the special election? That in the I don't election. understand. I honestly, truthfully, do not understand. Okay, let's that. give. So the so the update to that is, uh, if you don't know, there are uh, is there are two Senate races in Georgia. Right. And they're going to be January is it fifth, ninth? January fifth. Fifth. Mm -hmm. um, and those those races will determine the balance of power in the Senate. So right. presumably, Biden's going to be president. Democrats have the House. Republicans appear that they are going to have the Senate, unless both of the seats in Georgia in this special election are going to go to Democrats, in which case it'll be tie, in which case the tie vote in the Senate will go to the Vice President Kamala Ding Dong Harris. Kamala. Ka Kamala. Kamala. Kamala Harris. And um, so that would change Everything. 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 That's right. So all so eyes much are actually, well, that's true. And that's why all eyes are on Georgia right now. And they are purposely sending massive amounts of people. The two runoff races, in case you are unaware, are between Kelly Leffler and Raphael Warnock. And these people are very radical, too. And then Senator David Perdue versus John Ossoff. And so uh, this is going to, you know, Warnock is really out there on police and all sorts of other Things. And uh, his mentor was, anyway, I'm, I'm not even going to go there because it was just a, a real, real stark difference between these candidates. So I find it very difficult to believe that with what has happened previously in Georgia, that they would even lose it. Okay, well, and typically, it, based on the history of right. these special, because in Georgia, you have to win with 50% plus to win. And so if you have multiple candidates on a ballot, you may only get 40% or right. something like that, in which case you don't win. It just moves the top two to the election in January. Typically, the Republicans have fared better in that special election than the Democrats over however many years. Right. Do they call that a jungle primary type situation? Uh, yeah, Is that I the same so. sort of thing? I yeah, think so. Weird. And so yeah. the, the difference, though, is that Georgia has no minimum uh, residency requirement. And so people like the Andrew Yang, who is running for president, right. allegedly he claimed it on Twitter that he and his wife are moving to Georgia so right. they can cast their ballot for the two Democrat senators. They are urging, many other Democrats are urging Democrats to go and move. That's cheating. Right. And I think they have, <laughs> so I think you can, all it is. you have to register, I think by December 7th. So as long as you move to Georgia before December 7th, mm -hmm. you can vote in that election. You can vote for the two senators and then allegedly you can move out. Although you do run the risk of being charged with fraud. It is such a systems issue in Georgia too. There is such a problem through the hand recount process, which was just a nightmare. Multiple voting integrity issues were found. They had issues where um, unrecorded ballots were found in Floyd County, over 2,600 of the 2,700 in Fayette County, um, nearly 300 in Walton County. The audit revealed too that there were so many widespread systemic and systematic administrative failures that they can't even trust the administration of the audit as they went along too. So it was. Um, a nightmare in um, December 2nd, so this past Wednesday night, was when the recount had to be completed in Georgia from just the hand recount audit. And so, yeah, yeah it's, it's a mess in Georgia, and I don't think it's particularly fair for people to be able to move into the state. I don't think it's fair, but there are a lot of, a lot of people who are all heading to Georgia to try to get out the vote. I know that um, the Republicans have sent out gobs and gobs of staffers and had and done lots of door knocking and and even prior to the uh the uh special uh election coming up on january 5th so yeah. that's georgia right there we've already talked about georgia but in michigan what a mess in michigan too oh it's just terrible um also nevada um uh in, in Nevada, their issue is there have been so many issues of deceased Nevadans who have, mm -hmm. have gotten votes. In Michigan, the irregularities are so widespread. Everything from uh, uh, requesting independent audits to uh, going to Wayne County Board of Canvassers, and you probably heard all about the people in Wayne County in, in Michigan. And then in Pennsylvania, you've got, um, it's just, it's, uh, it's a mess too. Um, Involved in several lawsuits are working to ensure only valid absentee and provisional ballots are counted in Pennsylvania as well. And lawmakers, and maybe you saw the Doug Mastriano video. Um, I know a lot of people got to see that. And that was a fantastic, fantastic freedom speech that he did, too, um, mm. with Pennsylvania. So, yeah. Well, I hope that you are right, Lori. I hope <laughs> that I'm wrong. Uh, I just don't see this death by a thousand cuts is going to actually do anything to make it so Trump does get back in.
So we'll see what happens. Uh, next, we are going to be talking about COVID, the anti-science cult. We will be right back. Join us. Howdy, folks. It's the Catalina Cafe. I reckon it's time you're due for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill at a salad bar. Sink your teeth into our famous Catalina burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattling pie with a roll that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. Capital City Restaurant Supply is your one-stop shop for quality restaurant products for the large to small kitchens. Commercial grade restaurant and bar supplies, limb game processing equipment, refrigeration, dinnerware, and smallware. We sell everything including the kitchen sink from trusted manufacturers for the chef and all of us. Open to the public since 1971, we are veteran owned and North Dakota proud. Let us take care of your restaurant and home kitchen needs today by visiting us at 1414 Interstate Loop in Bismarck or on the web at CapitalCityRestaurantSupply.com. Beck Communications is honored to be recently recognized with three Broadband Now Awards. Beck Communications Cooperative was awarded in the categories of Top Internet Speeds Nationwide, Top 3 Fastest Internet Providers in North Dakota, and North Dakota's Number 1 Fastest Fiber Provider. It's only through the support of our members and customers that Beck Fiber delivers award-winning speeds and service. Thank you, Beck Communications Cooperative members and customers, for your years of continued support. Introducing Accord Comfort Sleep Systems, a better way to sleep. We offer you five different models to give you the perfect choice of support and body comfort. Every model begins with our exclusive Accord Comfort Reflex Layer. This ensures proper spinal alignment and a deep down body relief. Our 8-inch Whisper Breeze provides a medium firm feel, and our 10-inch Gentle Night Model has a quilted top, giving you a medium plush comfort. Both use Outlast fabric on the top of your mattress, ensuring that your body temperature is not too hot and not too cold. Our Copper Rest Sleep Series is our premier mattress, offering your choice of firm, plush, and luxury plush. Every model uses copper-infused gel latex and provides all the health benefits of copper. Accord Comfort mattresses are handcrafted in the USA and come with a 60-night sleep guarantee. You're going to love sleeping with us. Order today exclusively at AccordSleep.com or Tom's Home Furnishings in beautiful downtown Harvey. Is your business phone system outdated and expensive to maintain? Most large VoIP companies leave you on hold or struggling through online support and training for your employees. With Beck Connect, you always have fast, friendly, local support. Familiar faces with the know-how to keep you connected. Take advantage of the newest technology in voice calling, video conferencing, and virtual meeting rooms. Beck Connect gives you all the features you need with no upfront investment and no obsolete hardware or software ever again. Simplify your communications. Choose local. Choose Beck Connect. Welcome back to No Apologies on Beck. Well, we're going to hit something up again. We started last night, uh, and it has to do with the COVID cult and the shriekers of anti-science. I know you love that shrieking I do. It's so true. It's very, very true yeah. because they're very shrill yes. and loud. Okay, so the thing that we talked about last night and that I want to carry forward because, uh, by way of showing you various studies, real simple studies we can look at, and it, and it helps us understand where things are at, where the truth lies when it comes to COVID and masks and various mandates. And we talked about a, uh, a study last time that had to do with mask mandates uh, throughout the United States. This study is more recent, and this is a study in Kansas. Now, this study, by the way, is comes out, as you see here, from the CDC, the authority. Again, we uh, have this appeal that whatever the CDC says holds true, uh, whenever the World Health Organization agrees with them, then we're supposed to believe the World Health. If they disagree, then we're supposed to believe whoever is more restrictive on mandates. It's a very, very politicized thing. In any case, this more recent study has to do with the state of Kansas. The governor put out an executive order mandating masks, but leaving it up to the counties to decide whether they would be in, in, implemented. Mm -hmm. Now, this study indicates this cute little graphic here it seems so clear-cut for any of the non-science people that want to get something real quick a soundbite and run with it 
This says, hey, if there's a mask mandate, cases decrease by 6%. If there's no mask mandate, they increase by 100%. I mean, <laughs> how, how much more proof do you need? Well, obviously I obviously mean, that's what's true. Well, so. and I, I mean, I, yeah. we have to Dig look deeper. at the seriousness of, this is a CDC study. Right. This is all that people are seeing. This is all that the press is reporting. And that sounds very convincing. But I wanna take a close look at the graph that just popped up here, the two highlighted lines that has to do with the incidents. If you look at the counties in Kansas that implemented the mask mandate, mm -hmm. at the time they implemented it, under July 3rd through the 9th in that second column, you see that their case rate was 17 per 100,000. Whereas in the counties that didn't implement it, it was six. If you look in the month prior to that, they were both at three or four. So what was going on is that in the more populous counties that instituted the mask mandate, they, their curve for COVID cases started coming up faster. The same thing we saw across the United States. Out east on the both coasts, the COVID case came up much, much sooner. Right. In the more rural areas, it came up Slower. later. Right. Absolutely. So pop back to that if you would for me, Mr. Producer. Um, let's pop back and look at that incidence there. Because the, the key here is after the mask mandate was implemented, and they looked about six weeks later, what they found is that in the populous areas, it went from three up to 17, skyrocketed. They put the mask mandate in place, and then it dropped from 17 to 16. Whereas where they didn't implement masks, it was at four. It had only slowly climbed to six. And then when they finally caught up, because they were more rural, mm -hmm. it went up to 12. 12, not nearly as high. So, as 17. 12, so 6 to 12, but then down, what, 1? Right. Not only that, they, they, in the study, if you read the details, mm -hmm. there, was, there were some counties in which the county didn't mandate it, but the cities did. If you use those, the populated cities, mm -hmm. then the 17 does not go down. It stays to 17, and the 6 does not go up to 12. It goes up much less. The whole point is you have a, a curve, a COVID curve that happens regardless of when or where or if a mask mandate is put in place, and they come up at different times. Right. This is called a post hoc fallacy. They put something in place and something happens after it and they say, oh, it was because of this, and they look no further. The big picture, aside from digging into the details and recognizing that this, this is a really bad study, no one of, with any, any credibility scientifically should be pandering to the press with it. You look at the big picture here in the graph that's up, it shows the thin green line where the mask mandates were put in place in the select counties. It shows the wide green bar, which is the study period they looked at, and then they stopped. <laughs> so that's the so, sample. So what happened? <laughs> what happened after that with the mask right. mandates in place? <laughs> the curve went up. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, COVID does not give a crap about whether you have mandated masks or not. And this is borne out in case after case, state after state, country after country. And yet, when you take that little sliver there, you'll get the answer that you want for your narrative. Right. You cherry pick the statistics and, and you can create any kind of narrative that you want. Well, that doesn't sound like science. No, it does not at all. So these are the types of things we have to look at. And I, I, not to beat a dead horse, but I really want you to recognize, because this, just like the health affairs study for that we talked about last night, is something, a, a handful of studies that is put out there. They're very, very weak. They have no statistical validity. But they're put out there by the press and by select individuals as the end answer that should not and shall not be questioned. And remember, we talked last time. Science is the act of questioning. We need to question these things if we are going to look at it scientifically, if we are going to actually look for the truth. And when you dig into these studies, one after another after another, they completely, completely fall apart. But once you question things, then you get into trouble with the people who are sure of the answers. I mean, that questioning thing is, you know, heaven forbid yes. that you should be questioning anything. Right. Absolutely. Well, and it goes into what we talked about before, where um, people project onto you what they themselves have to bear, which in the case of these people is not understanding science. Um, and so, yeah, we have to deal with it. But the, the point is, we arm ourselves with information. Mm -hmm. We find out the truth. We stand by the truth. We speak the truth. 
and, uh, and we go from there. And that's how we're going to get on top of things. That's how we're going to finally get to a point where we have policies that are not based on emotion, but they are actually based on science. And we get away from policies that cripple the economy, that cause an increase in depression, an increase in suicide, an increase in substance abuse, an, in case in, an increase in failure to thrive, right. which is the saddest thing oh, ever of is. our elderly it's the population. Worst. Oh, I agree. Substance abuse, domestic abuse. I mean. And it, people just simply living in fear. That's the hardest thing right. for me to see is that people who are absolutely afraid all the time. And it's a horrible, horrible state in which to remain. It is. And there's no reason for it. The problem is we. Uh, government officials, in particular, have this this conceit or this desire to, to control, believe that yeah. they can control something like a virus, and that's really not up to them. It's not up to them at all. Um, so we'll keep you up to date. We'll keep you going with some of these studies. We are going to be right back talking about mailbag people that write to us. Very interesting. Be right back. I just went in for a regular mammogram and I found out that I had a little tumor. And through the exam and the and biopsy, it was determined that I had cancer. I got a call from one of my doctors that I was diagnosed with breast cancer. After five years, they found a local reoccurrence. The first thing you hear when, when you're told you have a cancer, it's a little daunting because you don't know where to go with it. Since 1999, in a partnership between CHI St. Alexius Health and Sanford Health Bismarck, the Bismarck Cancer Center has provided the most advanced radiation therapies and holistic support services for cancer patients and their loved ones for 20 years. I've been at the Bismarck Cancer Center since it started. I actually was in the basement of Med Center 1 before when we had old machines and old equipment and thankfully the two hospitals at the time, St. Alexis and Med Center One, joined forces to create the Bismarck Cancer Center. I walk in the door, I get nothing but hugs, and I was marveled at them. I mean, I thought it was the best place in the world. The staff is unbelievably compassionate, and they explain everything to you. Everybody's genuinely concerned about your well-being, and the level of care is just top notch. The Cancer Center just does such an amazing job of helping people. To me and my family, the Cancer Center means life. It's given me the ability to, to live out my life with my family, my wife, my children, my grandchildren. Because of them, I'm two years out. I get to move on with my life, make a difference now for other people. I would recommend this center because the minute you walk through that door, they've got your back. This center means so much to me and to the people that are in this building, and we just want to keep giving it back to the community and providing for them what they need. I'm Katie. I've been cancer-free for two years. I'm Steve, and I've been cancer-free for four years. I've been cancer-free for 10 years. 10 years. 11 years. 15 years. My name is Lainey, and I've been cancer-free for 18 years. Bismarck Cancer Center, your partner against cancer for 20 years. Who do you trust with your digital life? Not all cloud backup providers keep your data truly private. Beck Cloud Backup uses advanced multi-layer encryption to keep your family photos, videos, and sensitive business documents secure and only for your eyes. Your Beck Lightband Internet service already includes 50 gigs of free storage to keep your digital life safe and secure. Call us at 701-475-2361 to start using your Beck Cloud Backup today. Welcome back to No Apologies on Beck, your after hours oasis of sanity. I am your host, Rick Becker, our co-host, Lori Hintz. Hey there, glad to be here. So we are going to talk about just a little more on COVID. Okay. We're not going to, we're not going to. First of all, the point about the points. testing is how it's changed. Just recently, there was a little flip and I wondered if the change in tests was going to affect the numbers at all, and it seems like it already has a little bit. I looked at the numbers again uh, yesterday, I think, and I thought, oh, wow, there's a lot of people coming off of the 
the well, sick rules. Right. Yeah. Know. There, there, there are a number of factors with what's going on. And now, what, what, what's going to happen is that Governor, Governor Burgum and state government is going to take credit to say that the mask mandates are what's bringing it down. Again, if we look at the numbers, which we'll do sometime in detail, uh, it's, it's not actually because of that, not even close. In fact, uh, a couple of weeks, I guess it would have been three weeks ago, when, mm -hmm. when he, when he uh, first issued it, we said the curve is about ready to come down. It could be a couple weeks, could be a month, it could be whatever. Um, but there and, was a change in testing. Well, that, that's part of it. But, but part of it is that the curve was ready to come down. Right. So, yeah, let's talk about the testing. So the, the, the testing that has been performed is called a PCR test, a polymerase chain reaction test. It's the test that we've had for, for all these years. Uh, I mean, months. Well, and yes, months. Feels it feels like, like years. It does Holy. feel like years. But the thing about the PCR test is a cycling. I mean, over and over and over a, a cycling. So it mm -hmm. can be variable with how many cycles you use. Yes, so the, right, the PCR test looks for tiny fragments of RNA, that's the genetic material in the virus. And it cycles through, and each time it cycles, it identifies tinier and tinier and tinier pieces. So the more it cycles, the tinier the fragments get, and the more they can be similar enough to other things that it thinks it's positive when it's actually not. So there are more false positives positive. false with the positives. PCR test. Right. Now, it's, it's, it's indicated that the number of cycles should be less than 33. I have been trying to find out what the state has been using on their various machines. You can't get a straight answer. Really? There's, I have very serious concern that the number of cycles was higher than 33, possibly significantly higher. Than, so that means that there are a lot of false positives, a lot, a lot, a lot of false positives, which is, if true, responsible for carnage in the economy well, and think our... Think about how many people being... On our mental well-being, isolated exactly. Isolated for no reason and off work, and yeah, you're right. Absolutely. So, you're right. There may things, and we've been saying this. Things may have been elevated as far as the numbers because of false positives from the PCR tests, which again we can't even get simple, straight answers. They've now switched to the rapid test, the Binax Now test. It's a the 15-minute test. This is a little bit different. It tests for antigens, so they're little protein pieces on the surface of the virus. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a great test because it's only 15 minutes. It's only five bucks right. instead of 50 to 100 bucks. Very portable, very handy. But it has the problem of a greater number of false negatives. So would that not be more dangerous than? Well, possibly, possibly. So the, the, that, but the, the idea gets to what you're saying is could changing the test alter the numbers? Right. And it absolutely could because uh, although I believe very much that the likelihood for the greatest part of the curve is because that's just how the curve was going to go. COVID's running its course, maybe it'll be back again. Um, but it will be exaggerated, that downtrend will be exaggerated because we're using the test that has more false positives, people coming in po allegedly positive but truly aren't, right. switching out, it hasn't fully switched over by any means. I called today to try and get the numbers of what percentage is rapid, what percentage is not, can't get that answer. Um, Why not? Why is that not transparent? I don't, I don't know. We'll have, I'll, I'll keep digging. Okay. But we're, we're starting to transfer out to the rapid test, which has more people negative than actually are. And so that's going to that's gonna exaggerate the numbers. And that'll, that'll be part of it. Here, here's another... Is it not an Abbott Labs thing? Uh, is that where you were right going? Where I, gonna go. I knew where you were going then. Okay. No, I just thought the, the new test, the faster one comes from Abbott Labs. Both. Both of them, the PCR Both. and the OK. Both. OK, so here, here's, a, here's an interesting thing. I'm going to sound like a conspiracist, but it, it, if it's fact, it's not conspiracy. Miles White is the chairman of the board. He used to be CEO. Now he's just chairman of the board just, right. just. Uh, for, for Abbott, the huge company that makes all the machines and all the tests that Governor Burgum is using. There are other tests and other machines that you could choose from, uh, but Governor Burgum is choosing to use the PCR test from Abbott and the Binax Now test, which are made from Abbott. Okay. Miles White and he were buddies. They used to work at the same consulting firm. Miles White donated to his governor campaign and he donated, remember we were talking I think yesterday about Governor Burgum putting money in to take out conservatives mm -hmm. and put in, you know, prop in his own people. Miles White, chair of Abbott, put money into that pack to take out conservatives. I believe it was, the, he was the first donor at 50,000, then more recently uh, he put in another 60. I don't know, maybe more, I didn't look at all the filings. Mm -hmm. So this is, a, this is a gentleman that put in over $100,000 to take out conservatives for, it, 
for Doug, which is, which is what Governor Burgum wanted. And it just so happens Governor Burgum is using all Abbott stuff. Over uh, nearly 1.2 million tests have been performed in North Dakota. Approximately, it's hard to say because I don't know what, what kind of deal they might have gotten, but 50 to 100 million dollars has been paid to Abbott. Again, these are not, I haven't looked at filings, I'm just looking at simple uh, data points of how much a test costs, their Abbott, presumably that's what the state is paying Abbott. All right. But if, if that holds true, 50 to a million dollars going to Abbott, I mean, that's a big return on investment for donating a little over $100,000 to a I think that's purely optics. I do, I, that's probably just really bad optics. You know what, I, you, you may be right, I don't care. I don't care because you should have enough sense that you don't take money from someone who you're going to be sending millions and millions of state taxpayer dollars to. You don't do that. Fair. That just is sense. It may be a lack of optics. I think it's a lack of common sense. And I think it does bring into question whether there's, there's any quid pro quo. Probably not. I don't know. But the point is, we have to ask. Right. Well, it'd be, it'd be helpful if we got a little more transparency on things, especially, I mean, I know that of the uh, state of North Dakota right now, we're at 45% of people uh, who are residents of the state of North Dakota have already been tested. 45 percent, mm -hmm. which is a phenomenal number when you think about it. We've got 760,000 residents, right. and that's uh, that's a lot of testing. Right, and the multiple tests. We, you know, like I say, right. a nearly 1.2 million tests for for 760,000 people. Um, there are a couple of other interesting things. Some of the reasons why you might get na uh, false negatives with mm -hmm. the Binax. Now, if you use uh, mu mucopurisin, mupurisin, I don't know, it's an antibiotic ointment you can use on your face for um, eczema or what have you, that will cause a false negative. Oh, why? Yeah. yeah, there are a few things like that, that that make it a little questionable. It's still a good test, not saying it's not. But they, in their own literature, they say that a negative test should be a presumption, meaning what, what they're saying is you're probably negative. Right. In their own literature. Now with this rapid test with regard to that, does that mean you ha have to actually wait a larger amount of time or a shorter amount of time, I would think, you would before you isolate or before anything like that? And is it precluded by symptoms? Well, yeah, they, it's, it's weird because what they say, they start basically to say use common sense. Mm -hmm because you can't trust. As the graphic just showed that was up, right. it says you can't take that for granted if it's a negative result, right. which is <laughs> shocking. Right. And, you know, and I, I think it lends itself to the idea that um, asymptomatic testing is probably a waste of resources. I agree. Now, thankfully, it's only five bucks a test instead of the 50 to 100 for the, for the test before. Right. But I think that does lend itself very strongly to, to this idea, which, Many of us have been promoting from day one. Test if you're symptomatic or test if you've been in close proximity to a symptomatic person, person not correct. an asymptomatic person. Correct. Because yeah. that's how it's transmitted, is when you're well, symptomatic, and coughing, and sneezing. And that's how fear is transmitted as well. Just, you know, everybody's worried about, um, you know, somebody else. And, you know, that's why churches are quieted and, and all sorts of religious liberty things are in there. I, I just, the, the, whole, the whole thing is... Dangerous. It's a dangerous slippery slope that, the, that we've been on here regarding COVID. And I love the idea of a 15-minute result. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. But um, I think we have tested just a lot of people. We have. Yep, it's time to bring some sanity back. And um, we're going to bring sanity back <laughs> with our next segment. This time, we really are going to do mailbag, I promise. Yes. So <laughs> be right back. We'll see you then. Central, 4800. 4800, go ahead. Requesting social services on call team. Stand by. 4800, social services requesting additional information. You can advise social services that we have an 18-month-old female who was in a residence with a mother now being transported to medical care for overdose.
Trusting your digital life to faceless tech giants can be risky. Will they keep your family and business information truly safe from prying eyes? If you subscribe to local Beck Lightband Internet Service, you already have Beck Cloud Backup. Beck Cloud Backup is the safest, most private cloud storage for all your family memories, schoolwork, and business documents. Call 701-475-2361 to start using your free space on Beck Cloud Backup today. You just might find the home of your dreams this weekend by watching the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes Sundays at 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 on Beck. Featuring properties from Bismarck, Mandan, Minot, and surrounding areas, the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes presents desirable properties that are for sale, lets you meet your Alliance Realtors, and provides critical insights into local happenings from community and business leaders. Join us this Sunday evening at 6 or Wednesday at 7 for the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes on Beck. Today's households have more digital devices than ever before. More links to family, business, education, and entertainment. Beck Communications spent over 10 years building North Dakota's fastest fiber optic internet service. Beck Lightband Internet, outpacing speeds in large cities nationwide. Lightband Internet handles all your digital needs without throttling your connection to the world. Beck Communications, valuable digital connections in rural North Dakota. Howdy folks, it's the Cantaline Cafe. I reckon it's time you're due for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill, add a salad bar, sink your teeth into our famous Cantaline burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattling pie with a roll that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. Welcome back to No Apologies on Beck. We're gonna hit the mailbag. It's, this is our second show. Right. It, it might be slightly light, but we're still gonna have fun with it. Well, it's not even slightly light because these occurred before we even had a show well, on true. the air. So yeah. it was kind of interesting to me that people were already criticizing before we'd even been on the air yet. Well, <laughs> okay, so let's hit. So the gra graphic came up at the end of the last segment. Right. That, let's let's hit that one. Oh yeah, okay. it's, it's such a fantastic uh, question. I think we have to see it twice. <laughs> so, so is this a photo of a dude and a woman or a loving lesbian couple asking for a friend? This was up and I, you gotta know my mom was watching the Facebook page. So she asked me about that. She's like, what was that all about? Do you yeah. know him? I'm like, no, I don't know him. But um, thank you, Thomas, for that. I thought it was rather an odd. Well, I wanna know if what the problem of the friend is with lesbians why right. what's what's with the homophobia that's a really good point that's a great one and to be honest with you too i've been married to a man for 33 years so i'm kind of offended that anyone would think that i would anyway I I, i'm offended that he referred to me as potentially a dude because i have not given my preferred pronouns <laughs> so you have no right to assume that anything, you're a dude anything Right, that's a really, really good point. There was another one that I, I saw too on Facebook too, and I didn't really understand it because it wasn't really a complete sentence, but uh, a gal posted, can we are, A-R-E, for no lies from this show? And I'm wondering if she was trying to mean ask, if, if she said, can we ask for no lies from this show? And I thought that was an interesting question too. I'm just gonna give her the benefit of the doubt and say that that's probably what she, probably what she was asking on there okay. too. So and the truth is that the show is named No Apologies and it's named that for a reason. Right, we tell the truth and we don't apologize for it. That's right, and you should never apologize for telling the truth. We you know, try to get canceled in cancel culture sometimes and sometimes we try to say things that we know are truthful and people vehemently disagree with us and that's okay it's all right to disagree so our mailbag is um i, I also saw another one but i i don't know where it went it, it disappeared either somebody deleted it but there was another uh, comment on facebook for us too and by the way you can uh you can tell us what you think with look on uh, facebook.com no apologies with becca right there up on your screen if you want to comment and weigh in on anything that we said because we we um invite that but it's missing now but a woman said and i'm paraphrasing she said basically you should be ashamed of yourselves for promoting not wearing masks. 
and then it disappeared, and I don't know what that was all about, but uh, I don't know that we've ever promoted that because we haven't been on a show yet. And uh, the other thing is, is neither you nor I is anti-mask, and we need to make that clear. We're not anti-mask. We are not particularly, probably both of us are not in favor of mask mandates. Yeah, if you want to wear a mask, go for it. And I'm kind of good with that too, actually. And if you're symptomatic. Definitely wear a mask. In a current environment, for God's sake. Yes. Wear a mask. Yeah. Don't I'm, be dumb. But if you're not symptomatic, Wear one if you don't. Wear one if you want to. Don't if you don't. I, I mean, totally, I totally agree. Now you had one too that you. Saw. So yes. So I had uh, a, a a message on Facebook for the show, and it was from a Democrat senator, uh, and and his comment was he had a couple of comments. We went back and forth, but he said Port must be gnashing his teeth. He's referring to a blogger with Fargo Forum, who has this who has this thing. Like a little obsessive. He's yeah. He's he's a little. <laughs> he, he may be a little obsessed with me, but that's okay. Um, I, there's, you are a dude, so. Well, and um, I won't even go there. So okay. the thing, though, is that uh, Port recently put out a, an article saying that I can't be a legislator and a TV host. I'm not sure why. Part of, I think the reasoning was that um, I may have information that uh, I'm privy to as a legislator, and that so that should not be made public. I don't know. And, and how about how about the amount of stuff that is? I think it's a great thing because well, you're finally yeah. able to, you know, talk to people about right. some of the things. You want transparency in government. You just don't want anyone yeah. with knowledge. Yeah. So yeah. the goofiest thing. I hate to even bring it up because I don't want to give any, you know, any more credence to his. Right. I just want to let it go. But because it was it was interesting that. Uh, a more From senior, whom it came. yes, exactly. A more <laughs> senior Democrat uh, state senator brought it up. I thought, ah, he knows what's going on, and and actually, a lot of people have been commenting on that. But uh, yeah, keep keep the uh, keep the emails coming, the Facebook posts, the tweets, and so forth. You can and even send snail mail if you really, really want to. I'm sure you can find a way to do that too, as well. <laughs> Maybe. We'll read it. We could read it on, on the air. So we love mailbags. So this segment nightly, we'll do things like brain food, which is what we did last night, and we'll do mailbag. And we might be throwing some other fun stuff in there for you, too. So just look forward to it on the program in the future. We're yeah, working on it. Absolutely. Well, I think uh, it was a little bit of a short mailbag. That's OK. Mm -hmm. We go with the flow. And uh, what we're going to talk about next was the passing uh, of, a, of a superstar, in my opinion, in economics. And um, wow. Walter Williams right. passed away a couple of days ago. So we are going to be talking about him and his contributions. Um, join us back in just a couple minutes. Thank you. He once won a spelling bee in an ancient language that he did not speak. He is the only man to ever earn extra credit on an IQ exam. His academic degrees are considered legitimate spending currency in 22 nations, two principalities, and at Chick-fil-A restaurants in the United States and Western Canada. I do not always engage with education programming, but when I do, it is The Dr. Duke Show. Stay educated with The Dr. Duke Show, weekdays at 4 p.m. on Beck News. Introducing Accord Comfort Sleep Systems, a better way to sleep. We offer you five different models to give you the perfect choice of support and body comfort. Every model begins with our exclusive Accord Comfort Reflex Layer. This ensures proper spinal alignment and a deep down body relief. Our 8-inch Whisper Breeze provides a medium firm feel, and our 10-inch Gentle Night model has a quilted top, giving you a medium plush comfort. Both use Outlast fabric on the top of your mattress, ensuring that your body temperature is not too hot and not too cold. Our Copper Rest Sleep Series is our premier mattress, offering your choice of firm, plush, and luxury plush. Every model uses copper-infused gel latex and provides all the health benefits of copper. Accord Comfort mattresses are handcrafted in the USA and come with a 60-night sleep guarantee. You're going to love sleeping with us. Order today exclusively at AccordSleep.com or Tom's Home Furnishings in beautiful downtown Harvey. Capital City Restaurant Supply is your one-stop shop for quality restaurant products for the large to small kitchens. Commercial grade restaurant and bar supplies, limb game processing equipment, refrigeration, dinnerware, and smallware. We sell everything including the kitchen sink for trusted manufacturers for the chef and all of us. Open to the public since 1971, we are veteran owned and North Dakota proud. 
Let us take care of your restaurant and home kitchen needs today by visiting us at 1414 Interstate Loop in Bismarck or on the web at CapitalCityRestaurantSupply.com. My name is Rich Shook, and I lost my best friend in a grain bin accident. Some of the emotional scars that when these incidences happen just resonates throughout the community like dropping a rock in a pond. I guess I'll never forget. At least the last moments we shared. That's why I think this is so important to get out there to people is people think that it can't happen to you and it can. The time it would take you to just kiss a loved one and your life is is over. I believe it's unacceptable. This message provided by North Dakota Farmers Union. Welcome back to No Apologies on Beck. We are on our final segment tonight. Uh, and it's a good one. It's a sad one, but it it's sad. also a really good one because he was an amazing human being. Yeah, too. Walter Williams died Wednesday at the age of 84. And uh, he was a fabulous mind, um, a, a pioneer in economics, uh, a columnist, an author, and uh, contributed so much to the, a wealth of knowledge on so many things. That is so true. He was a, also a, the John M. Olin uh, Olin, Distinguished Professor of Economics at George Mason uh, University. Uh, he was known for his classical liberal and libertarian views. His writings frequently appeared on such things as um, WND and townhall.com, Jewish World Review. The thing about Walter Williams that I like the best is that he just spoke straight out from the heart. I felt like he was always, he was one of those um, modern day prophets sometimes because mm -hmm. of just the, the way he spoke plainly about things. And I always appreciate people who do that anyway. I, I, you know, um, I think when you have an iconic person who passes away, it's a good opportunity to look at their contributions and what they've meant to other people. And I know that I felt uh, when like Charles Krauthammer passed away, that was a mm -hmm. huge blow to me because I really liked his take on things. I enjoyed his... Um, wisdom and uh, sometimes he would say things that were outrageous and, and goofy but I always appreciated his style of of communication yep. um, you know then there was um, Andrew Breitbart another person that I would say was another one of those iconic people for me who was very influential and I think I don't know that we'll even ever know how influential Walter Williams really really was right well and, and you, you hit the nail on the head the the, the term influential um, there are there are a few people that have such a good grasp and are able to explain it, that are, that are approachable right. to the average person on understanding why small government's important, why cronyism, or in other words, corporate welfare is bad. Uh, he was against identity politics. Uh, anything that dealt in the realm of socialism, he was opposed because he knew that what it did is brought the ship down, not raise the ship. Right. And interestingly, uh, being a black man, he was very, very much uh, focused on how different policies affected blacks. And minorities, right. Yeah, uh, because exactly. he had a grasp of the importance of small government, and he had an understanding that the policies that were typically left leftist policies that were intended, they were well intended, mm -hmm. to help minority communities were actually hurting those communities, and he wrote extensively about it. Now, there are a couple of others that I strongly admire. I was just going to say, that, would you contrast and compare Thomas Sowell yes. to, is that who you were thinking yes. to? Tom, Thomas Sowell and Larry Elder. Right. Those, so the three of those gentlemen, black gentlemen, excellent grasp on economics and sound policy, small government policy, the importance of keeping uh, government out of things and letting a, an individual maximize their potential, maximize their dignity, do what they can. Um, and then realizing that and bring it into their own communities, into the black community, and they really 
I think were were the vanguard of what I think Candace Owens now. I was just going right? to say she's right? the she's the up and coming. She's I'm the next person the on that same genre. Right. Yep. And so and in fact there was a there was a documentary called Uncle Tom uh, that Larry Elder put out. Right. Candace Owens uh, was in it prominently. So they're bringing about a new generation that are understanding that the that the solutions proposed by the leftists by the Democrats are actually keeping them in mental slavery. Correct. And that they need to be break free from those bonds. They're mental bonds. They're bonds of dependence that those that claim to be helping them are actually harming. We know we've seen it starting already with just the vote that just happened in November. You can just you can look yeah. at the, the the wave beginning to gain some <laughs> right. some steam as it goes. Trump said, "What the hell do you have to lose?" Exactly, and he and, was and he was chastised, excoriated for no, it. No, he was exactly right. And but he's right. Mm -hmm. Since 1964, for better or for worse, the Democrats have taken the blacks for granted, and they've continued to put forth these policies which do nothing more then increase the dependence of the black community on Precisely. the Democrats to continue with those types of social welfare programs. I was just thinking about um, college programs for minorities and things mm -hmm. like that, how it just actually, rather than wanting to raise things up, it just it makes it more difficult to have to prove yourself. I mean, it, there is a, a, a real um, a real problem when you start giving individuals unusual advantages yep. and I and I love the fact that you're right Larry Elder Thomas Sowell and definitely the late and now great Walter Williams yeah. um, fit into that category absolutely question. he's he has uh, he's had many many good books out and uh, he had a column he put out which was fantastic went all the way up through last week at the age of 84 good for him. Uh, one of the quotes because he along with uh, wanting to get away from corporate uh, welfare uh, he also was not uh, in favor, he was adamantly opposed to class warfare. Right. And he has a quote, uh, it's government people, not rich people, who have the power to coerce and make our lives miserable. Coercive power goes a long way toward explaining political corruption. Oh, so true. Couldn't be more prescient at this time either. Right. So the, it's, it, that's, that's where the corruption lies. It's with government. It's right. not, it's not rich people. It's not big corporations. It, it's, those people, those corporations, those entities who get in to corrupted government, that's how they have the strings. That's the control. Right. So the enemy is not a corporation. The enemy is big government. Exactly. And that he, he I think he said that very well. Um, Do you have another quote by him or is that the last oh, one? Oh, I've, I've got a million. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, look at this one. Here we go. Yes. So, uh, Goethe explained, no one is as hopelessly enslaved as the person who thinks he is free. That's becoming an apt description for Americans who are oblivious or ignorant of the liberties we've lost. Now, when I read that, it reminded me of um, uh, Bob Marley. Oh, yes. Free yourselves from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. That's what that quote is all about. Wow. And that's what he was trying to tell the black community. And that's why I'm, I'm looking for where's, where's the next Walter Williams for the Native American community? Exactly. Who is going to lead their people, the Native Americans, out of this mental slavery of dependence? Hugely great point. That's a great point. We should start looking for that person right now. Well, the, yeah, I agree we should, <laughs> but, but really they, the, the community needs to yep. help. Yep. That, that train of thought and leader. find that leader to help them come out of that, that life of dependence. Oh, Absolutely. Great idea. That's a great idea. Well, this was really fun. It was fun. It was <laughs> right. fun. Tragic, but fun. Tragic, but fun. Well, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Uh, join us next week. All right. Where we, we are, are going, going to, be to be talking about the governor's new $15 billion with a B uh, budget in which <laughs> it was announced, and we'll be talking next time about that. Yes, and next on Beck, No Filter with Debbie. We will see you next time. Thank you for joining us. He once won a spelling bee in an ancient language that he did not speak. He is the only man to ever earn extra credit on an IQ exam.
His academic degrees are considered legitimate spending currency in 22 nations, two principalities, and at Chick-fil-A restaurants in the United States and Western Canada. I do not always engage with education programming, but when I do, it is The Dr. Duke Show. Stay educated with The Dr. Duke Show, weekdays at 4 p.m. on Beck News. Introducing Accord Comfort Sleep Systems, a better way to sleep. We offer you five different models to give you the perfect choice of support and body comfort. Every model begins with our exclusive Accord Comfort Reflex Layer. This ensures proper spinal alignment and a deep down body relief. Our 8-inch Whisper Breeze provides a medium firm feel and our 10-inch Gentle Night Model has a quilted top giving you a medium plush comfort. Both use Outlast fabric on the top of your mattress, ensuring that your body temperature is not too hot and not too cold. Our Copper Rest Sleep Series is our premier mattress, offering your choice of firm, plush, and luxury plush. Every model uses copper-infused gel latex and provides all the health benefits of copper. Accord Comfort mattresses are handcrafted in the USA and come with a 60-night sleep guarantee. You're going to love sleeping with us. Order today exclusively at AccordSleep.com or Tom's Home Furnishings in beautiful downtown Harvey. Capital City Restaurant Supply is your one-stop shop for quality restaurant products for the large to small kitchens. Commercial grade restaurant and bar supplies, limb game processing equipment, refrigeration, dinnerware, and smallware. We sell everything including the kitchen sink for trusted manufacturers for the chef and all of us. Open to the public since 1971, we are veteran owned and North Dakota proud. Let us take care of your restaurant and home kitchen needs today by visiting us at 1414 Interstate Loop in Bismarck or on the web at CapitalCityRestaurantSupply.com. My name is Rich Shook, and I lost my best friend in a grain bin accident. Some of the emotional scars that when these incidences happen just resonates throughout the community like dropping a rock in a pond. I guess I'll never forget at least the last moments we shared that's why I think this is so important to get out there to people is people think that it can happen to you and it can the time it would take you to just kiss a loved one and your life is is over I believe it's unacceptable. This message provided by North Dakota Farmers Union. I just went in for a regular mammogram and I found out that I had a little tumor. And through the exam and the and biopsy, it was determined that I had cancer. I got a call from one of my doctors that I was diagnosed with breast cancer. After five years, they found a local reoccurrence. The first thing you hear when when you're told you have a cancer, it's a little daunting because you don't know where to go with it. Since 1999, in a partnership between CHI St. Alexius Health and Sanford Health Bismarck, the Bismarck Cancer Center has provided the most advanced radiation therapies and holistic support services for cancer patients and their loved ones for 20 years. I've been at the Bismarck Cancer Center since it started. I actually was in the basement of Med Center One before when we had old machines and old equipment. And thankfully, the two hospitals at the time, St. Alexis and Med Center One, joined forces to create the Bismarck Cancer Center. I walk in the door, I get nothing but hugs, and I was marveled at them. I mean, I thought it was the best place in the world. The staff is unbelievably compassionate, and they explain everything to you. Everybody's genuinely concerned about your well-being and the level of care is just top-notch. The Cancer Center just does such an amazing job of helping people. To me and my family, the Cancer Center means life. It's given me the ability to, to live out my life with my family, my wife, my children, my grandchildren. Because of them, I'm two years out get to move on with my life, make a difference now for other people. I would recommend this center because the minute you walk through that door, they've got your back. This center means so much to me and to the people that are in this building and we just want to keep giving it back to the community and providing for them what they need. 
I'm Katie. I've been cancer-free for two years. I'm Steve, and I've been cancer-free for four years. I've been cancer-free for 10 years. 10 years. 11 years. 15 years. My name is Lainey, and I've been cancer-free for 18 years. Bismarck Cancer Center, your partner against cancer for 20 years. Who do you trust with your digital life? Not all cloud backup providers keep your data truly private. Beck Cloud Backup uses advanced multi-layer encryption to keep your family photos, videos, and sensitive business documents secure and only for your eyes. Your Beck Lightband Internet service already includes 50 gigs of free storage to keep your digital life safe and secure. Call us at 701-475-2361 to start using your Beck Cloud Backup today. You just might find the home of your dreams this weekend by watching